Welcome to the GoVenture Small Business tutorial video. Let's learn how to play. So with GoVenture Small Business, you're put in the role of an entrepreneur or a small business owner who starts and runs their own business. You make minute by minute, hour by hour decisions. Let's go in, have a look. So one of the things you'll notice is that anything that's colored orange, the or color orange, is clickable. So we have sliders that we can change numbers with, drop down selectors, uh, text boxes that we can scroll, and buttons that we can click. So anything orange is clickable. So if this is our first time playing, what we want to do is start a new simulation. If we've already been playing a simulation and uh, we saved it previously, then we could resume where we left off by using the resume option. We'll come back to this a little bit later. And we can also adjust the uh, sound on or off. Uh, you can also use your own uh, computer speakers and settings for that. So let's start a new simulation. So what we can do here is we have two options. We can either dive into a quick start. A quick start is a pre-existing business that's already set up in the system. It's not one that you've created. It's one that uh, we as the designers have created for you. And uh, you can dive into an existing business by choosing a quick start. The other option is to start your own business by making all of the startup decisions yourself. So you can see here there are 12 startup decisions that you can make. And you do this by clicking on each of the 12 boxes. So let's do that. So here we can enter our profile, and so we can say our name, for example. We can browse uh, our computer drive to add a photo if we prefer, and we can set what our expected salary is going to be. Now this is not the actual salary we'll earn in the business. This is just what we would like it to be, you know, yearly or monthly and, and so on. And you can look back later to see if you're actually meeting your objectives. Personal objectives is where we can write a brief summary of what our, our goals are, our personal goals for starting and running a business. Is it because we want to make a lot of money? Is it because we want an, a nice type of lifestyle? Is it a combination of both? Whatever our objectives are, we can identify them here. The business plan area is where we can do a, a simple summary business plan. Uh, this is primarily an executive summary of a business plan because you're not going to do a fully detailed one here, but it's a nice place to start to determine what your business objectives are going to be and how you're going to go about reaching them using your plan. And you can uh, work on your plan as you run your business. Next is our business type. This is where we select the type of business we want to operate. We can operate an ice cream store, sort of like a Baskin Robbins type store. It's, uh, ice cream is actually the easiest uh, business in the choices here. We can do a coffee shop, sort of like a Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts, for example. Uh, we can do a sandwich shop, somewhat similar to a Subway uh, business, or a music store like an HMV. And we can choose any one of those to start uh, for our business. I'm going to choose the uh, sandwich sh shop. Our legal structure, this is the uh, legal entity that we're going to create for our business. We can either do a sole proprietorship, partnership, or corporation. You can read about the, the details by choosing uh, each one and then reading a summary of what the differences are. I'm going to choose a corporation. We can enter our business name. I'm going to call mine Yums for yummy sandwiches. And we can also search, do a search on the business to see if it already exists. It's going to uh, cost us $50. The benefit of searching for a business name is to make sure that one is not already registered uh, because if we try to register a name that has already been registered by someone else, we could be infringing on their trademark and that could cost us money. So you may want to consider doing a little search uh, first, but I'm going to use the name anyway. We can choose a logo for our business. We can either choose from the many uh, options that are available to us or we can uh, upload a logo from our own computer. Um, and perhaps if we created our own logo using Photoshop or Illustrator or some other graphic program, and then we can add it uh, to the game here. Location is where we want our business to be located. And uh, location has a number of effects from uh, how the weather affects the traffic patterns uh, of the location, the time of day that you'll see, uh, peak traffic times, and and so on. So location you want to select carefully and you can choose uh, from different regions or different countries, different regions. Uh, the larger the region, the more competitors you might have. And these are all uh, virtual competitors. Uh, they're not other human players. They are computer-run businesses that you can compete against. 
And you can also choose the location within the uh, city or the town, uh, whether it's the shopping district or the entertainment district and so on. And again, this will uh, affect a variety of, of variables in the simulation. You can read about uh, them all here. So let's choose. Then we can move on to site. And this is the size of the unit, uh, the actual business that you're in, the location. Um, and you can start with a small one and grow, or you can start re directly with a larger location. And of course, the larger the location, the more customers you can serve at the same time. If you have a small location, you might find that there's a lineup and you might lose customers because the location might be a bit too small. But of course, a larger location can often cost more money, so you want to uh, read the, the details carefully before you make your choice. Equipment. Uh, this is the equipment you need to operate your business. So I have a sandwich business, so I need a variety of refrigeration, uh, perhaps some ovens and toasters and this type of thing. And so we can choose different types of equipment. Uh, some are under warranty, some are not. Warranty means if it breaks down, uh, it will be replaced at no cost to you. Uh, whereas if it's no warranty, if it breaks down, then you have to pay the repair or replacement cost. So you're kind of taking a bit of a risk with no warranty, but you're also saving money uh, at the beginning. So. Uh, you choose the one that uh, makes uh, most sense for you. Permits. This is where we have to apply for various uh, permits in our town or municipality or city that uh, we're required to have uh, with the government to make sure that we're meeting the obligations and guidelines for that location. I can either purchase insurance and I can see the cost there. Uh, if I need some environmental impact uh, permits, I have to do that as well. And you can see that these, uh, these permits are automatically selected, yes, because I do require those permits. I have no choice in buying them, whereas insurance and environmental are, are optional. And finally, we have seed financing. Seed financing is the money that you need to get started in your business. And you can see a list of your startup costs. So I can see my total is here are $74,000, so quite a bit of money in startup costs. Um, but in addition to the startup costs, which are the the, the money I pay out for my equipment and my location and my permits and so on, I also need working capital. Working capital is like money you have in the bank that you use on a daily basis to buy your, buy your inventory and pay your employees and do some marketing and so on. And you can have uh, a lot of working capital or very little working capital. Of course, more working capital is better, gives you more flexibility, but it might also cost you a little bit more money depending um, how you're going to get that money, whether you're going to take out a loan uh, and so on. Uh, you can also identify your sources of financing. Uh, love money is essentially money from friends and relatives. Savings is your own personal savings. Uh, debt is a, a loan uh, from a bank or other organization and so on. Or you can do a combination of equity, which is selling a percentage ownership in your business. So you can uh, adjust the sliders to see what's the best options for you. And that's it. So the good news now is we've set up all of our business decisions. Now, normally it'll take you a little longer to do this because you're going to want to take time to read through all of the options that are available. Um, so you want to allocate a fair bit of time to do that uh, and make the right choices. And once you do, you see all the, the green question marks are ready to go. Now, if you want to change anything, you can still do that. You can go into your business plan and work on it a little bit more, for example. Or you can still change your business type. Um, so you can change these options before you begin, but once you begin, some of them uh, you will not be able to change, like your logo, for example, and your name, you will not be able to change. Legal structure, you, can't cha you cannot change, but you can continue to work on your business plan and your personal objectives uh, and so on. So let's uh, begin the simulation. Okay, so we've just launched our new business. Congratulations. Uh, the first thing we can do is we can go through this quick uh, tour. Um, by, by clicking the next button and uh, we'd recommend that you do that. It only takes a few minutes, but let's, uh, let's quit that for now. So we're ready to go. It's telling us that our business has been set up to operate from Monday to Friday, nine to five. That may be good or maybe you want to change that. Perhaps we want to work uh, later in the evenings or also work on Saturdays and Sundays. That's completely up to us. And here's a step-by-step -step guide of what we should consider doing every day and we should take a moment to review that and then we can kind of close that for now. Now one of the things you'll notice is there's a flashing uh, banner at the top that says click here when you're ready to start. So essentially, this, even though we've launched our business, the simulation clock has not started. You can see there's a clock right here. It's 9 a.m. 
uh, year one, day one. So the simulation will actually run minute by minute, hour by hour. It goes faster than r the real world clock, uh, but everything runs based on this time. But time has stopped right now, and the reason it's stopped is because we now have the opportunity to set up our business before we open it up for customers. So we should take some time and order our inventory, plan our pricing, hire some employees, you know, do all the things that we need to do to plan properly before we open. And then when we're ready to open, we can click here and the system will uh, start right away. Now, um, once we start the simulation, we uh, cannot stop it. It will pause at certain times, we, and you can pause it at certain times yourself by clicking the time button, for example, or when you go home, it'll pause as well. Uh, but otherwise, the clock will always be running. And so I'm going to start the clock anyway, even though I have not actually set up all of the decisions that I need to set up, just so we can see how it operates. So let's go ahead and click that. All right, so here we go. Um, it's 9 a.m. Uh, you can see customers are actually coming into the, into the business. And uh, every once in a while, we'll see them walking up to the counter and placing an order. We can monitor the weather. I can see it's actually cloudy and cold. Uh, that affects the traffic patterns uh, to my business and the types of products that uh, people might buy as well. So we need to keep an eye on the weather. Now, up here, I can see what my menu of products are. So there's my salad and my soda. As I roll over each item, it pops up uh, describing what it is, cookies. Uh, underneath is the number of products that I'm selling. Now right now everything is zero and everything's red. The reason we're seeing red bars is because I'm actually uh, out of inventory. I have not purchased inventory uh, to have these products in stock or to make these products. For example, sandwiches we require bread and meat and vegetables, and, but I don't have any of that, so I can't actually sell anything. And uh, the zero is the number of products I'm selling, so again, I have not sold anything. Under that are the prices that I have set for my products. And, we can change all these things um, as we run our business. Uh, in this uh, column here, we can see the number of customers that we're serving and losing. And we can actually see we haven't served any customers, again, because we don't have any products. Um, and also uh, how many we're losing, probably because they're walking in and placing an order, but we have to tell them that, sorry, we don't have any products today, uh, which is not, not very good. So uh, again, this is why it's important to plan before you actually click that banner to start the business. Now again, you can see the clock has been moving as, as we've been uh, watching here. It's now uh, already noontime, so it started at 9 a.m. It's already noontime. As I mentioned, if we, we need to take a breath, we can uh, click the time button and it will pause. You can actually control the speed of time as well. You can make it move very slow or very fast. Now, why would you change this? Well, if you're finding that things are just moving too fast for you, you may want to slow, down, slow it down a bit. The negative aspect of slowing down the clock is you can't get through as many days as you can with a faster clock. And the fewer days you play, the less opportunity you have to generate revenue and profit. So the faster the, the game plays, the more opportunity you have to generate more profit. But at the same time, if it moves too fast, you can't make decisions as quickly. So you have to be very careful about speeding up the clock to fast and very fast because you just may not have enough time to plan what you need to plan. So normally, you should stick with normal as you're setting. You may want to go to slow if you're finding it a bit too fast, but uh, be very careful about fast and, and very fast. So let's keep it uh, uh, normal for now. All right, so we're, we're back in the, uh, the main interface, which is the management screen, and that's what you can see at the bottom are the main areas of our business, and we can navigate to them by clicking the buttons. Uh, along the right is our smartphone, our virtual smartphone. We can see how much cash we have, our revenue uh, for, the, for the day and the total for the, uh, all time, our market share um, in terms of us versus our competitors, our customer satisfaction. So you can see our customers are not very happy, uh, and again, because we're not serving them very well. Uh, once we hire employees, we'll see uh, an emoticon here as well for their, our employee morale. Employee morale means how happy uh, employees are with their, with their work and their job. And we can also have our, our, our monitor our personal stress, uh, which is impacted by how many hours we're working and what kind of positive and negative things are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And so if we want to reduce our stress, we want to go home and spend time uh, with our families and time sleeping, that will help reduce our stress levels. So let's start making some uh, quick decisions. So as I mentioned, right now we're on the uh, management screen, so there's not much to do here. We can 
we can click on here and, and visit the uh, GoVenture website as an example, or we can look at some charts and graphs about our sales. The other thing on this screen I'll, note, I'll mention as well is this orange box, which will accelerate time temporarily. So if you're pretty happy about your decisions, you got inventory, you got your prices set, and you want the clock to move a little bit faster just for a few moments, you can just roll your mouse over this orange box and it will accelerate the clock until you remove the mouse and then it goes back to normal speed. So that's another nice uh, convenience feature. Oh, now while I've been talking, you can see it's uh, clock has reached five o'clock and my, my business was actually scheduled to close at five and that's what's happened here. So let's click OK. Now let's start navigating and making some real decisions for the next day. So here's where we can set our operating hours. So I'm set to work nine to five every day, but maybe on Mondays I want to open up in the morning. So I'm going to open up a little bit earlier in the morning and I want to work until, uh, have the business open until the evening. And I can do that. I can see I'm closed on the weekends, but maybe I want to open for breakfast on Saturdays and I can do that uh, here as well. Employee schedules, that's when we hire employees, we can actually come here and schedule employees to work. We'll do that in a moment. Here's our startup details. This is where we can continue working on our business plan. Or, uh, we can see our name, our logo, our financing, our legal structure. These are things we cannot change. Uh, but we can change our facilities. So we can uh, change our location or upgrade our equipment or our site, uh, adjust our permits. Uh, it can cost us a fair bit of money to change these things, so we do have to consider it carefully, but it is possible to change some of the options. And what you would do is just click on, uh, on each one to consider doing that. Now let's go to products and inventory. Here we can access our various products. So there's a salad and our soda, the price that we set. Now what we can do is we can look at uh, a product by clicking on it. So there's our breakfast sandwich. We can see what it's made of, uh, eggs and peppers and cheese and bagel and butter and uh, we need a paper plate and a paper napkin. So there's a lot of uh, costs associated with uh, selling this one sandwich. And this is where we can set the prices of the sandwich. We can either uh, use the plus and minus buttons or we can actually click right in there and put a price of four dollars or whatever number we want using the keyboard and so we can adjust the price for all of our products and you can do this at any time even while your business is open now to make sure we have enough inventory to make these products we have to go to our inventory area here's where we can see all our different types of inventories from bagels and beef and bottled water and bread and so on we can see how many we have remaining the average cost the average quality uh, better quality can attract uh, better customers and they might be willing to pay more. Um, so that's something we have to consider. And the shelf life. Shelf life means how long a product will uh, stay uh, without spoiling. And of course with a food product uh, they tend to spoil a lot faster so you really got to manage your shelf life uh, in your inventory. In other words, don't order more than you can sell. So here's our different suppliers. These are uh, our suppliers that we can order inventory items from. And you'll notice that each one has different levels of quality, different average prices, different shipping options, and credit. Credit is how much product they will ship to us, the value of the product they will ship to us, without us having to pay up front. Now, if we uh, pay the suppliers on time, they might increase our credit. If we don't pay them on time and we're late paying them, or we don't pay them, they will reduce our credit and it'll make it difficult to buy from them. So we may want to buy uh, from one supplier or buy inventory from different suppliers depending on the combination of price and quality and shipping and all of those uh, factors that we need to consider. Uh, to order more inventory, we go here and we choose who we want to order from. It brings up the list of products that we can order from that particular supplier. So we enter the quantity of what we want to order and it automatically calculates all the numbers, choose the delivery time, and then we can place our order. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And we can review the orders that are scheduled to arrive. So I can see that's the order I just placed and it's going to take five days to arrive. So again, you got to plan uh, ahead of time uh, to make sure that you have everything that you need. So that's our products inventory. Again, that's where you set prices and you manage your inventory. HR is where we can see ourselves and adjust what our expected salary is and so on. Again, this is expected salary, it's not the actual salary. We can review resumes of different people we want to hire. So we have all sorts of different employees. And as you run your business, you'll see new employees, uh, potential employees appearing as well. So these people are not people working for us yet. So they're not actual employees, but they're uh, candidates for employment. So we can, for example, look up Annie. We can read 
Annie's resume, and then we can negotiate a salary offer. We can try to we can give her a lot of money or we can negotiate a smaller amount of money. So let's go for 9.45 an hour and see what she says. Well, she's accepted our offer. Now, some employees will not accept our offer depending on how much we're offering. Um, maybe they have more experience and they expect more money or not. It's up to you to read into the resumes to make sure you're hiring the right people. And you can hire multiple employees and schedule them uh, to work at different times during the day. And we'll look at that in a moment. So once you've hired somebody, there's Annie. She's now our employee. We can change her salary at any time. Of course, if we increase her salary, she'll probably be happy. If we decrease her salary, she probably won't be very happy. Uh, we can invest money in training her. We can read here about what the benefits of that might be. Uh, we can dismiss her, which means firing her if she's not working out. And so we have complete control over uh, our expenses and our costs associated with having employees. And of course, having employees, what it does is it helps us serve more customers at the same time. So when it's busy, uh, or even when it's not busy, it allows us to do some other things in terms of managing the business. We can implement some benefits and incentives if we want to increase the morale and, ro and loyalty of our employees. And we can review HR reports to see how our employees are doing on a daily basis. You know, are they productive? Are they treating our employees, our customers well? And so on. Uh, once we've hired somebody, we can go to the operations area. And you remember earlier seeing our employee schedule. So there's Annie now appears in our list. And Annie's scheduled to work Monday to Friday, but maybe a 9 to 5, but maybe we'll just have her come in uh, in the mornings on Mondays as an example. So that's our HR area. And let's look at sales and marketing. Here's where we can uh, develop our summary strategy, or essentially our four Ps, our product, our price, our place, and promotion. We can uh, conduct different types of advertising campaigns. So for example, maybe we'll do some radio ads, and we make our choices, and we can see where our cost associated with doing so is. And when we run advertising campaigns, our expectation is that it will increase the awareness of our business. In other words, more people will know about us, and hopefully it'll increase the traffic to our business. Of course, we'll never know for sure what works best until we try it and do some analysis. We can invest some money in sales and marketing programs, and we can read about the various ones here to see which ones we think might be best for us. We can review various customer information. We can see how many customers we've served and lost. At the bottom here, there's an actual summary that shows us why we're losing customers. Is it because we're service is too slow? Is it because our equipment is not large enough to manage that many customers? Or uh, we don't have enough inventory. In fact, I can see here that uh, I've lost 268 customers because I don't have any employees. I didn't have enough enough people working to serve those customers. We can move on to competitors here. This is where we can see some information about our quality and our product prices and how they compare to the computer competitors that we are uh, playing against. Moving on to finance, this is where we can see the uh, bills that we have due, items that we may have already paid, uh, money that we've earned, which is our cash received, and here we have to come and actually do our payroll. So we have to pay our employees um, every so often. We have to pay ourselves, hopefully, to make a salary. And so this is where we would decide how much we're going to pay uh, each person and, and so on. And of course, you have to make sure you have enough cash in order to pay everyone. Otherwise, you run into cash flow problems. To analyze our business, we can go to our financial statements, and we can uh, read our balance sheet, our income statement, cash flow. These are all very useful uh, financial and business reports that will help us make better decisions. We can print our reports. We can export some of them uh, into a CSV format, which allows us to import them into a spreadsheet like Excel, for example, if we want to do some more analysis. We can uh, raise money by going to the bank and asking for a loan or an equity investor who will buy shares in our business. And so by having more money, we can do more things. Maybe we can do more advertising. Maybe we can uh, grow into larger facilities uh, and so on. We cannot start other new businesses with our extra money if we're profitable or, or raise more money, but we can invest in growing the, the same business that, uh, that we're already in. And then finally, um, because it's an entrepreneurship simulation, a small business simulation, we really have to understand work-life balance because in a small business, the business owner is very much connected to the business. And so at the end of the day, you have to go home. You can see how many hours you've been working. And you can also allocate time for sleeping and with your family. And this will determine what time you'll get to work the next morning. So if I want to get to work the next morning at 7 a.m., I've actually come home 
uh, uh, pretty late the next day here. But I can ad click advance time and it will take me right back to the next morning. We can see a summary of the end of the day, what happened uh, in, summer, in terms of how many sales we've made and our costs and, and so on. And so the idea now is that the clock is always running, as we mentioned, except when you're at home getting some time sleeping and so on. And uh, you have to manage your time uh, while you're reviewing your inventory or doing your financial statements. The clock is still running. Customers are still coming to your business. So you've got to manage uh, your time. You've got to manage your employees' time well and so on. Now, while you're doing all this, we have an advisor here that uh, gives you advice along the way. So as you click on different areas of the business, you'll notice your advisor information changes and you can read a little bit more adv advice as to what's happening. A couple of other options to know about. We've got a help button here. If you can read a user guide for assistance. Uh, there's a performance report. And this allows you to view a detailed report of your performance and a score. Uh, normally this is what your instructor is going to want to see. So you would either uh, save it or you might have a send button here and you click the send button which will send the report to your instructor. And then finally, after you've been playing Go Venture Small Business for a period of time, you may want to uh, step away and save your progress. So you would click on Setup and you would click Save. You don't want to quit right away because you will lose your progress if you quit right away. You want to click Save, um, enter some information here, save it to a file on your computer. Usually it's best to save it under a file name that has the current date so you can actually monitor the different days that you've saved your simulation for. So you can save it for today and then you can come back to it uh, tomorrow or later today, whenever you want, and you would resume that file that you saved. So think of it like saving a Microsoft Word file or an Excel file or spreadsheet file on your computer and then you just reopen that file to continue your progress at any time. So make sure you don't lose that file. Um, keep it with you and make a backup as well. And then as you continue to progress, you can resave uh, to new files, and that way you always have backups in case anything were to happen with your simulation. So that is it. That is GoVenture Small Business. You've got everything you need to know to get started, and good luck.